contrarian, leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. She called the housing crash. She called the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers and the crisis in the Eurozone banking system. Okay, so I heard through the grapevine that um, a few people like to discuss money and profits. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Raise your hand if that's true. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me? I heard that a few people want to discuss money and profit. What's in it for me? Is that true? Yes. Okay. So I want to discuss money and profit, or not money and profit, but profits. Um, but I want to do it from uh, investors' practitioners' perspective. I'm an investor, and there's a, I'm going to call it academic, but more of an empirical way of looking at investment. So I have children. I have three children. Not really children. One of them works for me. That's the handsome guy in the back that almost looks as good as father. And there's my daughter, Mary. I want to have an older son who couldn't make it. He's 25. Um, I try to incorporate everybody into the business. It's a family business. The, I tell them in measuring um, investments, you have to understand costs and return, um, risks and return. Risk, by definition, is the cost for return. So if you look at things from that perspective, you can measure um, the potential reward for an investment on anything, even if they're disparate. Purchasing this microphone versus traveling to uh, Lagos, you know, or gold versus air airplane. You measure the risk, you measure the reward, you look at the reward as a function of the risk assumed. Okay? Those are a fancy way of saying, you know, what are the chances to get your fingers chopped off when you go to for something? Most people, I would say particularly people who professionals do it as well, they only look at one side of the equation. They look at the right side, return. I made, ex you know, I made four hundred thousand dollars in Las Vegas last year. I'm a genius, and I'm going back again because I always make money. But if you just look at the four hundred thousand dollars you made, and you ignore the one point two million dollars that you spent, you don't realize that you're taking a loss. So, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other tokens have enormous returns. Bitcoin, if I'm not mistaken, is up about forty-five thousand percent. Okay, obviously nobody understood that much right again. Bitcoin is up 45,000%. Wow. 45,000%, the percent after 45,000. Okay, I'm looking for a reaction. Maybe you didn't hear me. 45,000 percent. You know, <laughs> you put ten thousand dollars in Bitcoin, you're six million in. Okay? Now, Bitcoin is very, very volatile. Okay? You see it go up and down in price a lot. So if you look at uh, Google, a lot of the magazines, the so-called smart people from London and New York City, they say, don't invest in Bitcoin. Investment banks, sell site analysts, the um, uh, Financial Times reporters, people who are supposed to know what they're talking about. The LBS, you know, the London Business School, don't invest in Bitcoin, it's volatile. Who cares if it's volatile? Discussing its volatility is only capturing risk. But the measure, the performance of an investment, you have to. Nobody? To capture the prospect of investment, you have to measure the return as a function of the risk assumed. So if you're just looking at risk and you ignore the return, it makes no sense. So, Bitcoin now, there's a way of doing this. Technically, it's called risk adjusted return. And there are two ways of looking at it that are popular. The Sharp Ratio, named after William Sharp, uh, investor, uh, a professor. And there's a Sortino Ratio. The Sharp Ratio takes standard deviation, how much something really goes back and forth relative to the average, to me. This is like nerdy stuff. So if you're not in the business, I know some of the audience is in the business, some of it isn't. So I'm going to start from scratch. And as much as it, if it deviates, if this is the average, the mean, deviation from the mean is measured as risk. Okay? And that is then applied to the return, how much money you get. Okay? And that's a sharp ratio. But there's something very, very wrong with that. It helps a lot instead of just looking at return, but there's something wrong with that equation. Right? 
Does anybody know what's wrong with it? I know at least one person knows what's wrong with it. Messiah? Excuse me? Say one more. Say well, it is looking backwards, but unfortunately, all of them have to look backwards because they, to look forward, you have to project. But that is a universal problem. The problem with the Sotini ratio, if you measure risk as upward, downward movement relative to the average, you're capturing movement as risk. But a lot of investors, especially a long only investor, want a lot of movement. I'll give you an example. Here, I'm going to pick on you, stand up for a minute. Okay? We're going to have an investment. I'm going to give you this digital token, okay? It's gonna have a very risky move. This is zero, this is negative 100,000, this is positive 100,000, okay? Mm -hmm. According to the short ratio, short ratio, he's gonna have a very risky move. It goes up $18 million, mm -hmm. okay? That is gonna register as a lot of risk. Are you happy or unhappy? That would happen. Very happy, <laughs> right? Give me risk all day like that, how can you do it? But the reason why it's measured as risky because that was uh, that's a high standard deviation, a high deviation for me. Yeah. What you want, what most people consider risky, is hold this investment down there, mm. right? Downside. So you want downside deviation to be considered risk. You want upside deviation to be ignored. Okay. You don't want to consider upside deviation reward because then you're double counting it because the reward is also considered upside. Yes, right. So you only want to punish downside deviation when you lose money. But this is only working when you're a long only investor. And what's a long only investor? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can speak out loud fast. Mm -hmm. As opposed to day trading or short short trading. Mm -hmm. Well, not both. Short -short 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 long only investor is? Messiah, what's about what's a long only investor? Only speak, speak, so everybody can hear you. Uh, a long only, based on... Oh, okay, you can no, talk. I'm definitely no, just when I'm speaking up. So go ahead. Somebody speak up. Invest, hoping that your investment will go up value. Right. Mm. Long only investor wants prices to go up only. Okay. okay. A short only investor wants prices to go down. Go down. Mm -hmm. Because when you're short, you borrow something, like a security, okay, at this price. And then eventually you have to give it back. Mm -hmm. But when you give it back, when you give it back at what? Yeah. Right. Shorting, buy high, sell low, long, buy low, sell high. At least that's the way you want it to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen that way, but you know, that's life. So, long only investors only want downside risk to be served as a punishment in the definition of risk. Or oh, downside movement, I'm sorry. A short investor would actually want upside movement to be considered risk. Okay, so a uh, long short investor or a macro trader or someone who says I'm going to make money no matter what happens, their definition of risk is a little different because they can have some long investments, some short investments, some mixture of it, etc. Now, we're going a little beyond what it takes to go through cryptocurrencies, but I'm going through this, but you can sit down if you wish, sorry. I'm going through this because um, I want everybody to be able to at least um, from a high level, ascertain whether something's a good investment or not. So when you pick up a newspaper and you see certain authorities or certain um, investment houses with the axe to grind, because a lot of sell site institutions from New York and London may not want people investing in things that don't need brokers. And if they're brokers, that sort of circumvents their you know, revenue stream, they'll penalize something. So if you factor in the downside risk or the upside and downside risk of Bitcoin, you get a risk adjusted return. How do you think Bitcoin fares in relation to currencies such as the euro or the dollar? <laughs> How do you think it fares? They're already at a game. What? I think they're already at a game. Headed at a game? Bitcoin has a risk adjusted return about that much. Mm -hmm. Almost any forest pair you can think of about that much. But how about the more risky investments? And usually, if risk is the price of reward, that means you have to take a bigger risk, you expect what? Yeah. A bigger reward. Okay. And by the way, when you um, measure investments this way, this is basically called economic profit. You know, profit, you know, from an economic perspective. To tell if you're making an economic profit, an economic loss, 
from an academic perspective, you want to buy $2 of risk, but you want to receive $3 of reward. You might actually lose money in that transaction. But over time, you will get $1 of economic profit. Over time, statistically. A lot of people will actually pay $2 of risk and accept $1 of reward. But they're happy because in that particular instance, I made $5. Like the guy who went to Vegas and won $400,000. He said, I won $400,000 in a slot machine on the crap table. I mean, it's a good investment. Yes, it is. But if you went back tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the day after that, do you think he's going for $400,000 every time? No. I have so many of my friends from childhood swear that they're the best gamblers in the world and they always win money. Like Vegas powers all these lights and all these multi-millionaires get all this money because they're giving me money for free every day. They don't. The odds against winning, the against the odds of winning are minuscule. Take the lotto. In the US, you buy a lottery, they'll print the odds on back of the lottery. One in one and like forty eight thousand zero dollars. Right? You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning and rescued by Martians before you win the lottery. <laughs> but people play the lottery anyway. They believe they are the one. Excuse me? They believe they are going to be the one. Yeah, everybody believes they are one. And then if you win two or three dollars, they feel, you know, enlightened. But you spent like six hundred dollars with four dollars. Risk adjusted reward. Okay, so in that respect, Bitcoin has one of the highest risk adjusted rewards of almost any asset class, of any asset class in existence. Every major asset class. Global equities, US equities, fixed income, commodities, precious metals, you name it. Bitcoin blows it out the water in gross return and in risk adjusted return, despite the fact it's highly volatile. F is up 4,800%. F is up what? 400% in the last month and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very strong performance. It's over, up over five or 6,000% over the last year and a half, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of strong performing tokens. Now, PSA, public service announcement. Let me get in front of the camera. There's this one token designed by this tall, extremely handsome gentleman. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just making sure I'm following me, okay? <laughs> it's called Veritasium. Uh, I mean, the company's called Veritasium. The token is called Veritas. It launched uh, April 25th. Wow, somebody, I'm afraid of that. Wow. And it's done relatively well, I think. Even between last night and today. Really? Yes. Scared of you. <laughs> so it launched on April 25th. What was the US dollar value of the launch? You know? What was the what? The US dollar value of the token at launch. Uh, when I, I saw something like $13, I don't think that was the launch price. Yeah. It was discounted 20% to, you know, as a sales incentive. It was about $1.77 yeah. when I it launched. That. And that was about a month and a half, a little more than a month and a half ago. And it's 94 today. How much was it again? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Ninety-four dollars. <laughs> Ninety-four dollars. <Yeah. laughs> Somebody do the math for that. What's ninety-four minus a dollar seventy-seven divided by ninety-four? What would that be? Excuse me. I didn't. You would divide by ninety something. You divide by one dollar seventy-seven. But one. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> So what's the approximate return on that? Not money. Not money. Not money, yes. <laughs> <Not money, yeah. laughs> so, the, now there are reasons for this, okay? That's actually not traded on a liquid exchange yet. It's traded on decentralized exchanges, which are relatively illiquid, but it's actually had decent value, up to an average of about two and a half million dollars per day, which is a lot, considering the fact it's not even on an exchange. Um, a lot of that value, um, comes from a perception that I may be able to monetize it. It comes from the fact that it has a real business model and real business products behind it. Um, my trip to Jamaica is basically a result of me attempting to monetize uh, Veritasium, the Veritas token. And the token is very special because unlike Bitcoin, which is primarily um, 